So uh, welcome to this morning's MIST online seminar. We're very pleased to have with us Andrea La Rosa. Um, he did his PhD at the University of Orléans, and now he's working at uh, Queen Mary in London. Um, and uh, we're very pleased to be hearing about magnetic switchbacks and solar wind turbulence. So um, Andrea, if you'd like to take, take it away, please. <laughs> Good morning, everyone, and thanks for uh, the opportunity to talk here. Um, as you can see from the title, I'm going to talk about switchbacks and turbulence in the solar wind, especially in the inner heliosphere, we, that we could uh, explore uh, a bit further thanks to the Parker Solar Probe mission. Just a second. This is the outline of my talk. So there is going to be an introduction where I'll discuss briefly Parker, what are switchbacks, and um, some properties of turbulence in uh, the inner, inner heliosphere. Then uh, we're going to discuss uh, um, the magnetic rotation distribution in the inner heliosphere and what are the implications for switchbacks. And uh, and before concluding, I'll discuss the preferential deflection of switchback, which is a, a, a peculiarity of this kind of structures. Um, just to give you some context, here you have um, a picture of Parker Solar Probe, which is uh, the closest ever uh, spacecraft, the closest ever spacecraft to the sun. Sorry. And uh, here you can see many instruments that are divided in four main uh, instrument suites. That are, and uh, for this work, the one of interest are fields and sweep. And uh, I will be using mostly magnetic field data for, uh, from the magnetometer that you can see here. Um, just to tell you where we are, is this is these are this is uh these are the trajectories of Parker Solar Probe, and uh, this is the timeline since the start of the mission, and you can see that now we are at the sixteenth uh, perihelia, and we almost uh, reach reach distances as low as ten solar radii. Um, uh, what, are, what what is the motivation be behind this mission is uh, is related to some uh, to the three main main fundamental problem in uh, in solar uh, in solar wind physics, which are namely the coronal heating problem that you can see the uh, some uh, the plot here. Basically, you can see that as you move away from the sun with light above the photosphere. You have this sharp increase in uh, in the temperature, which is uh, quite surprising considering that, considering that we are moving away from the sun, and uh, this uh, this is a major problem which has not been solved yet, and um, and uh, another problem which is closely related to this is the one of the solar wind acceleration. We have a uh, busy. There are many different models that can explain different kinds of solar wind, but there is not a, a single model that can, can explain all the features that we observe. And um, another uh, interesting problem is uh, the structure and dynamics of the magnetic field at the sources of, of the solar wind. We, we, we do not know precisely yet what is like the, what is the structure of the magnetic field where where the solar wind is uh, is uh, released into into the heliosphere and uh, there are there are different competing models and uh, and we are still uh, I, I think we are getting some clues with uh, with PSP but uh, we are Still, we are closer, but still far to solve this problem. And fi finally, the problem of acceleration and transport of energetic particles. Uh, for the purposes of this talk, I'll, I'm, I'll be mainly like what I'm going to present is gonna be mainly related to the first to the first two points. Um, one of the main discoveries of PSP is uh, the presence of uh, 
uh, sh sharp rotation of the magnetic field uh, that are um, that are now known in the community as magnetic switchback, and um, this uh, this this kind of structure that uh, you 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 can see here. Uh, these are data from the first perilia of uh, PSP. We have the magnetic field in RTN components, and uh, these structures are quite evident in, uh, especially in the radial component. As you can see in the blue line, there are this rapid reversal of the magnetic of the magnetic field that uh, are all over the place, and uh, you can see them at different scales if you zoom in. And um, this kind of structure uh, were actually observed before by other missions such as Ulysses or or Helios. But uh, the surprising fact with PSP is that they seem to be ubiquitous in uh, in the inner uh, in the inner heliosphere. And um, another, uh, I, I'd say, defining properties property of the switchback is the fact that uh, um, they are highly alphanic, as you can see from um, uh, the, the plot on the right, where the the velocity field is overlapped to the uh, to the magnetic field component by component and where you can see that there is this this perfect agreement the they behave very similarly and um so why it's important to state clearly why do we care about these structures um this, this uh, many there, there has been a huge amount of work related to switchback and uh, and it has been shown, for example, that they contribute to the solar wind acceleration. This uh, this work has been presented, but is not is not published yet. And uh, in, in here, the authors show that basically, uh, by comparing the data uh, at different heliocentric distances between Parker Solar Probe and Solar Orbiter, they were able to show that um, the 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 energy needed to have the extra the um, the extra acceleration between these two points was uh, indeed given by by this by these structures and uh, um there is still the issue of how much and whether they contribute to the coron the coronal heating and if the plasma is altered within these structures is something that has not been uh, clar clarified yet so we don't know yet what is their contribution to the coronal heating, and um, and in according to the different mechanism of generation, they could provide uh, clues on the topology of the magnetic field at the sources of the solar wind. This is gonna be this last point. It's gonna be clear uh, in 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 a little while. Um, a, when uh, studying these structures to understand uh, a key a key properties a key property to understand the origin is how they evolve radially. With PSP is since PSP uh, span a, a large range of distances, it is po it is possible to study their evolution with distance. Um, in particular, in in this work by uh, Jagger, by Jagger Lamudi by Jagger Lamudi et al. Um, he, he showed that um, he, okay, and in different colors you have different um, uh, amplitude of the deflection. D is the parameter defined here, and basically uh, the D equals zero point zero five is equal to eighteen degrees. D equal to 18, 18 degrees deflection, D equals 0 0.5 is a 90 degrees deflection and so on up to 180 degree deflection when D is close to one. And uh, what you can observe is that uh, as we move away from the sun with increasing radial distance, uh, the number of uh, small uh, amplitude uh, structures decreases while the large am amplitude one increases. And this, in, in this, there is also some dependence on the solar wind speed. For the slow wind, it seems that this behavior is uh, pretty much the same. While for, uh, for the fast wind, for a velocity higher than 400 kilometers per second, there seems to be some, uh, some plateauing of, uh, 
of these curves. But keep in mind that uh, PSP uh, sampled a really little uh, fast solar wind. So uh, I would take this result with a grain, of, uh, this plot with a grain of salt. And um, this said in uh, a lot of effort has been uh, made towards the modeling of uh, the of uh, this uh, magnetic field deflection. And uh, nowadays we have many models that we are not able to pinpoint um, uh, with uh, with. With 100% accuracy, the, the most uh, valuable one. And these models are uh, usually divided into three main categories, which are the shear driven models, the reconnection driven, and the expansion and turbulence driven models. Um, here, uh, this slide, it's, go it's going to take a while. I'm going to guide you through the different ideas that have been proposed to explain these structures. For example, in uh, this cartoon, which is which is taken by Ruffolo et al. 2020. Um, their idea is that the solar wind below the alphan critical surface, where uh, the wind speed is equal to the alphan speed, they assume that below the surface, the, the solar wind is, uh, is made of, uh, of magnetic tubes um, that, uh, due to the high magnetic pressure, they cannot um, let's say, interact with each other. But uh, once the alpha critical surface is crossed, if uh, the differential speed within the different tubes is greater than uh, the alpha speed, then uh, nonlinear kelvin Helmholtz instability can be developed. And uh, this would cause magnetic roll-ups and that would be observed as switchbacks by the spacecraft crossing them. Another kind of shear driven model is the one by Shadron and McComas, where basically they assume that uh, this kind of kink uh, of the magnetic field are due, are due to, the, um, to the fact that the faster wind can overtake the slow wind if the, if the magnetic uh, uh, foot point of a field line moves from a region of slow to, to fast wind. And uh, so these are the the, let's say the two main ideas of, for the shear driven uh, models. Then there are the, re the reconnection driven models where um, um, uh, in, in this kind of models, uh, switchbacks are thought to be the result of uh, an interchange reconnection process of two different kind. In the idea of Fisk and Casper, uh, the, uh, the interchange reconnection process happened within a open field line and a closed field line. And um, the outcome of this is a, a kink in the magnetic field that uh, is left in the newly formed uh, open field line. And uh, this escaping kink would be seen as a switchback once crossed uh, by, by the spacecraft. And uh, even though there are doubts of whether this kind of structure can survive to the distances at which switchbacks are observed by Parker Solar Probe. Um, another kind of this model is always based on interchange reconnection, as you can see from this plot where time is, is increasing going down. And here there is, a, this, a, a, there is an interchange reconnection process between these field lines with different orientation. But in, in uh, this is, these are simulation result, and uh, the outcome of the interchange reconnection process is a flux rope that um, that once crossed by the spacecraft would appear as something like this in uh, in the magnetic field data. And what you can see is that in this kind of model, they are able to produce a reversal, but it seems that they are not able to capture the the high degree of alphanicity that uh, we observe in, we observe in the data, and finally there are uh, the expansion turbulence driven model, where um, switchbacks are assumed to be formed by, um, by due to the fact that in uh, in a uh, in the expanding solar wind the amplitude of the fluctuation dec decreases at a slower rate than uh, the background magnetic field and in such a way that uh, 
given enough expansion time, the fluctuation grows so much that are able to bend the field. And these models are, are called expansion turbulence driven because um, um, and basically ex, uh, ex expansion also fits the turbulence by because uh, it gives uh, uh, an extra term that provide re re reflected wa waves that uh, can give rise to nonlinear interaction and therefore turbulence. Um, and uh, this said, let's uh, let's discuss now. Introduce what are what switchbacks are. What are the main ideas behind the formation? And uh, I'll discuss briefly uh, what uh, about turbulence. We all know that turbulence is ubiquitous. We can find it uh, both in uh, neutral fluids and plasma, as for example the Earth's ocean, planetary atmosphere, in our own atmosphere, and uh, it is present in um, all sorts of uh, astrophysical medium like uh, the solar corona and the solar wind, which is the focus of this talk, and also in um, more exotic, uh, more exotic environments. Um, in um, PSP has provided us the opportunity to study turbulence. In the inner heliosphere and uh, its and also its radial evolution, and here uh, I'm reporting some of the results. Uh, um, we with PSP uh, at Chan et al. were able to demonstrate that uh, the magnetic spectrum, which is a uh, basically a standard way to study turbulence, since it it it, it shows. Uh, where uh, at which scale the energy is concentrated and uh, different theories gi gi uh, give uh, different predictions. And uh, in this in this work, they showed that um, the, uh, the, uh, the magnetic power spectrum evolves from a minus five thirds slope away uh, away from the sun to a minus three by two going closer to the sun. That uh, they also show that there is a um, an, an excess of magnetic energy, as you can see from this curve, which is um, 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 the okay. Uh, as you can see, which shows the difference between the energy in uh, the velocity field, in the velocity fluctuation, and in the magnetic field fluctuation. So as you go closer to the sun, the magnetic fluctuation become more dominant. And uh, the fact that the turbulence become more unbalanced, and it, this is expressed by sigma c, which um, um, which basically th this, this curves means that as we go closer to the sun, we have more and more out outward propagating uh, fluctuations. And uh, another interesting property with respect to turbulence is that once we are in uh, in the subalphanic region, in the subalphanic regions, the the level the level of the fluctuation of delta b is lower with respect to the subalphanic uh, regions. This is to say that uh, we are studying uh, these these structures, the, the switchbacks, but these structures are evolving in a medium which is. Uh, uh, which is notoriously turbulent, and the tu the the turbulence property properties them themselves are evolving are evolving with distance. So this is something that we have to keep in mind, and we would like to understand how switch what is the relation between switchbacks and and turbulence. Um, Many studies have been uh, have been done trying to study the properties of um, of of switchbacks and uh, and turbulence, and uh, here I reported some some of uh, some of the main results that uh, you uh, basically are um, are reported here. And uh, so basically switchbacks possess higher power and intermittency levels and shorter correlation time with respect to the neighboring plasma. Uh, the, the power is more isotropically distributed between the parallel and perpendicular direction 
parallel and perpendicular direction. And they possess a more de developed inertial range with critical balance-like scaling. And uh, possibly this is not clear yet, an answered energy transfer rate. Um, okay, now we can, uh, in order to introduce the uh, the core of my talk, I need first to move back to some uh, one AU results that will help us to um, to interpret um, the result in uh, the inner heliosphere with the Parker Solar Probe. Um, uh, another way to study the magnetic rotation is uh, is to study the increments of the magnetic field. The the increments are. Uh, are defined as follow. Basically, we consider uh, the, um, the difference between the, the magnetic field at a time t plus tau minus at, uh, the magnetic field at times t, and we uh, we consider the magnitude, and we divide by um, the magnetic field magnitude at that time t. And uh, in this work by Zelankin uh, et al, uh, they, they showed that uh, the distribution of um, this quantity uh, can be rescaled independently of the tau in, into a log normal uh, distribution function, as you can see, as you can see here. And um, here I reported the log normal function and um, and uh, they, they can be rescaled into an universal log normal distribution function, provided that sigma is, is equal to one at all scales. And um, and furthermore, they in this work they show that the magnetic field mostly undergoes pure rotation between uh, uh, between uh, two different times, so between t plus tau and t. And this means if we have a if we have a, a pure rotation, we can uh, link the increments, uh, the increments to the angular deflection. And here you can see that um, th this is a tool I, I'm I'm going to use to investigate uh, to investigate switchbacks. And uh, what's in, what's interesting ab about this work is that um, uh, from uh, that since one and two are true, and uh, we can obtain a rotation model for a uh, delta theta, and this rotation model fits quite quite nicely the data. As you can see here, there are the wind data in blue, and uh, the rotation model and the rotation model in red, and. Uh, and this these results can be. Reproduce can be reproduced quite nicely by uh, MHD turbine simulation, pro provided that the root mean square fluctuation are a order of the background magnetic field, as you can see from uh, the plot on, on the right. This result is quite important because it tells us that, um, um, contrary to what many believe that turbulence is capable of uh, uh, reproducing the full distribution of magnetic field uh, of uh, magnetic of magnetic field rotations that we have in the solar wind um, so this uh, brings us to the motivation of this talk um, and so we are, we ask ourselves what, what happens to the magnetic field increments distribution closer to the sun and uh, whether switchbacks arise as a separate population with respect to this distribution, and what is um, what role turbulence play in uh, in shaping these distributions? Um, in order to uh, to answer these questions, we we use the magnetic increments as already mentioned, and we use data from uh, the first. 11 orbits of PSP, so we are always, and we consider data uh, uh, only below 0 0.5 AU because uh, the data quality is uh, is much better below 0 0.5. And uh, the magnetic field data we use are the one with four sample per cycle cadence. And um, from this whip suit, we use the electron pitch angle distribution to, to remove the hemispheric current sheet crossings because um, they're simply not part of um, the population of the standard solar wind fluctuations and uh, other transients like uh, coronal mass ejection. 
for uh, for the same reason. And uh, when uh, we look at um, this uh, distribution at uh, uh, in PSP data, this is what we have for a different for different time lag. And uh, basically, you can see that uh, at at small scales, it seems that uh, we have a more uh, um, large angle rotation at uh, uh, when we are when we are closer in, while the the situation seems uh, to change when uh, we increase the lag tau, and uh, and it is the opposite when we go when uh, we go to to the large scale. But uh, in um, in studying the distribution in this manner, there is the problem that by using the same tau at different distances, we are um, we are looking at the turbulent spectra at different levels of delta b by b. So in order uh, um, in order to, to to avoid this this and make the shape really comparable. Um, we 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 applied the the following procedure basically for uh for each of the previous curves we computed the mean delta b by b and we plotted it against the the, the lag used and then we by by having this these curves we can decide to fix some uh average level of delta b by b for example here it's 0.2 and uh, this way, we can choose the tau that corresponds to this average level of delta b by b at different at different distances. Uh, this way, we are sure that the underlying average level of delta b by b is the same for all the distributions. Um, once uh, once we do this, we have some uh, uh, interesting results. Um, Basically, we see that now at small values of delta b by b, all the different curves collapse together, and when and they start to split apart when we increase um, the the average value of delta b by b, and therefore the scales the scale we are looking at, and in in these plots uh, you have the um, the shaded area are are the errors. And um, how, how can we interpret um, this result? We uh, we came across at least two uh, two interpretation. The first one is that uh, we can see that um, that this distribution have the same shape at small scale, so we can uh, interpret them in terms of turbulence because um, distribution are, are are fully evolved at small scale. But this is not the case for uh, for uh, the for the large scales, and uh, the fact that different scales are processed uh, in a different manner is a typical signature of turbulence, because we know that at small scales we have a more nonlinear time that have elapsed, while it is not the case for uh, the large scale. So simply, th these curves here are more processed by turbulence, and. Uh, and they can collapse together, while for uh, the larger ones, for the larger scale ones, these uh, not enough nonlinear times have elapsed in order to obtain the same result. But there is a there is another possible um, interpretation, which is that uh, uh, this result could be due by a combination of. Uh, um, of expansion because as I mentioned earlier, expansion can can grow the the ampli the the level of the fluctuation with respect to the background field. So an enhancement in delta b by b, which would give uh, a larger delta theta, and um, but the, the, this alone is not enough to justify this change in shape because these are normalized PDF. So to justify the change in shape, the expansion needs uh, an extra ingredient, which could be the fact that um, um, this structure uh, are mostly, um, the fact that in the solar wind, um, the medium is mostly incompressible, and so the magnetic field is observed to maintain uh, locally it, its magnitude. And this sets a limit to the value of delta b by b, which cannot be greater 
which cannot be greater than two. So basically, this could explain the the build up that we observe here with uh, with increasing radial distance. In uh, in uh, in this is a a small sketch to to explain uh, this point. Basically, at closer to the sun, we have some distribution of delta b by b as a uh, we move away due to the increase of delta b by b. This distribution is shifted, um, is shifted towards larger value. And here, this point. Ah, oh, sorry, I forgot to add that. This should be at two. Once we reach a value of two, which is the limit, there is a um, a pile up, which then can change the shape of the distribution. But as we're gonna see, the 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 the, the shape that the, the distribution have uh, is um, okay. I'm gonna show you. Uh, and uh, what I want to say is that uh, the the shape that the distribution have is probably uh, not. Uh, it's not possible to explain it or uh, with uh, with this mechanism. But this is gonna be clear in a in a couple of slides. And um, yeah, like, um, if we think uh, we go back to the rotation model and we see what happens at PSP distances, um, we have that uh, for uh, the, the Zedankin picture that the model they propose in the paper to be valid, we need two ingredients, which are the fact that delta B by B is uh, due mostly to rotation. And this is the case uh, for a uh, PSP data. I'm not going to show it, to show it. And the fact that uh, we have a a, collab a collapse of delta B by B, so all the different curves collapsing together independently of the of the time lag, and this requires that uh, sigma is equal one in uh, in the log normal distribution. Um, to test this, basically here we have the same distribution but arranged differently, and um, uh, for for each for each subplot we have all the all uh, the five different values of delta b by b, and um, we 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 can see that the and uh, the dash dotted line are a log normal fit to the data. And here, what you can notice is that uh, the 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 fit is quite nice at at small scales, the blue line independently of distance. While for the larger scales, uh, it, it it's not very nice. It's um it's let's say less good closer in, but it becomes better and better as as we move farther out, and uh, consistently. With this, also the sigma parameters goes towards um, goes towards one, and as we move further away, so it goes towards the condition that um, that are uh, that, that were observed at at one AU. And um, but this this curves there are some deviation but overall if we look at the coefficient of determination all of them uh, are uh, are fitted quite nicely by uh, by a log normal and um, a log normality can be linked to turbulence in the context of uh, multiplicative random cascade process but it's uh, it's it's something which is hard to explain only only with expansion uh, but we we still need expansion to grow to grow the fluctuations. And uh, finally, we um, we test also the rotation model fit. Here uh, we are fitting instead of delta b by b uh, as in the previous case, delta theta by theta. And again, you can see that the model doesn't work perfectly. Um, when we are closer in, but it improves with incre with increasing uh, radial distance, and this has uh, implication for switchbacks because basically you see that uh, um, uh, we are capable to fit the full di distribution of rotation with a single function with a with a single function. This seems to suggest that switchbacks are uh, are just part of. Uh, 
um, of the distribution of the magnetic field uh, fluctuation. And um, uh, finally, I'd like to I'd like to di to discuss the preferential deflection of uh, of switchbacks. And uh, the motivation for this is that um, many authors have shown that uh, switchbacks tend to deflect more along the the tangential direction. And this property is, is important because can be tested against uh, different generation mechanism. And uh, as we have done so far, we look at it in a scale and uh, distance and distance dependent fashion. Um, the way we do that is that for each uh, uh, delta B, uh, we compute its projection on the tangential and normal di direction in the RTN frame, and according to which one, uh, according to which projection is uh, is greater than the other, we 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 label the deflection as preferential, uh, tangential, or normal. And uh, and then we we compute the correspondent uh, delta theta, and uh, when we do so, this is what we obtain. We have uh, the dashed curves are the one where uh, the deflection are more uh, uh, towards the normal direction, where the full are more towards the tangential direction, and uh, up. Uh, up Apparently, there is not a big difference in the distribution at uh, uh, also at different tau. But when we compute uh, the ratio of uh, the distribution that present a, a preferential a tangential deflection normalized by the one that pre present a preferential normal deflection, we we get the following results, where at um, at small scales. It's, we can see that uh, everything is uh, dominated by noise, but uh, uh, as elucidated by the, the large error bar. But as we go to larger scales, what we can see is that, uh, as, sorry, in this plot, when we are uh, below one, we are preferentially normal. When we are above one, we are uh, uh, preferentially in the tangential direction. Um, what what we can see is that um, at large angles, it seems to that uh, the deflection are preferentially along the tangential direction, even though this is not always the case. And uh, while at um, at um, at small at smaller angles, there are uh, um, at smaller angle and uh, farther out in uh, part probably we are uh, at zero point four to 0 0.5 AU, the, there are, um, there are uh, the distribution show that uh, we have a preferential normal, uh, normal, def normal deflection. And um, this result has, uh, we still miss an, an interpretation for this. Uh, we are uh, we're still working on it. If, if, uh, if you have any suggestion, uh, they are more than welcome. And, uh, uh, Finally, here uh, my conclusion is that uh, uh, we find that while the magnetic rotation at small scale are uh, already evolved towards log normal towards log normality independently of scale and distance, the distribution for the larger scales closer to the sun did not evolve yet to a log normal shape, and. Um, it seems that the rotation uh, model proposed by Zedankin uh, fits the data um, better and better with increasing radial distance, and um, and the fit work best at, at the smallest scales. Um, we I, th I think we have shown that uh, the evolution of this distribution requires both uh, uh, turbulence and expansion because we need the expansion to grow the fluctuations. While uh, um, it's uh, we attribute to turbulence the fact that uh, these um, these distributions are then re uh, reshaped into a log normal into a log normal shape, and uh, we also show that uh, the the preferential deflection is uh, 
um, are both scale and distance dependent, and we have to study this result fa further in order to test them against the different uh, generation mechanisms. And um, okay, and basically, we suggest that turbulence is playing a role in the switchback evolution. And um, finally, a point that I'd like to make is that uh, I think the results shown here. Um, I like the importance of uh, a turbulence-based approach for uh, understanding uh, in a holistic way the, the solar wind fluctuation. Uh, th thanks for your time.